Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial review, we're gonna be having a look at Brett FX's Text Message 2 plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. Now, if you need to emulate or show text message conversations on screen, or message conversations on screen, then Text Message 2 can do that for you. Um, it's got a lot of customizable options, um, and it will also display text messages in different formats, whether that be on iPhone um, or other kind of different things that you need to include like video or images. And we're gonna have a run through some of the different settings and ways that you can um, set this up in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, if you like these kinds of tutorial reviews or tutorials for Final Cut Pro 10, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button. But without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at the text message to plugin from BrettFX. So we're gonna jump in here and have a look at the text message to plugin. So the first thing we're gonna do is drop down a picture onto our timeline here. And we'll stretch this out to 20 seconds. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you're using a picture or a video, the Text Message 2 plugin will work in the same way um, with whichever kind of media you're using. So the first thing uh, we're gonna do is just change the scale of this to get it to fill our screen here a little bit. And we'll reposition this just a little bit across the right. So I'm just using the scale in the inspector, although we could come to the transform controls and drag things up here as well. It doesn't make too much difference which way you do it. So once we've got our image in the right spot, uh, we're gonna jump up to our generators and type generators up at the top left. And we're looking for the Brett FX text messaging plugin. Um, and basically in here, you can see we have a whole bunch of different messenger options. So we have things like Facebook Messenger, and then scrolling down, we have iMessage as well, if you wanna kind of replicate those different styles of messaging uh, systems. So we're gonna have a look at the, the basic messaging um, up here. So the first thing uh, to do is to drag down a text message to the timeline. And what you'll notice, we'll just come to the middle of that text message option here, is that it moves the image as well. So this is part of the, the modular setup of the text message plugin. So basically what's gonna happen is, as we have our conversation from one person to another back and forth, we're gonna be using the left and right um, text message options here. So basically, as these animate on, our left hand text message is gonna pop up and then our right hand text message is gonna pop up and they're gonna move up as the conversation goes on. So we'll delete this right hand side one for the moment and we'll just focus on this left hand message. So just looking at the basic type options that we have here, if you come up to your inspector, we have a few different uh, options that we can modify here. So we can turn on and off our animation elements, so the build in and build out and also the auto advance options that we have uh, for our text message, we're gonna leave those at the default. We have the options down here to modify our message, so we can, we can type in a new message. And you can see that the graphic frame of that text message will resize based on the amount of text that you're popping in there. So if we have multiple lines of text, then our text frame there will um, increase in size based upon that. So the one thing we don't wanna happen here really is for this type box here to move our image up. So we're gonna fix that straight away. And this means we're kind of dealing with the timeline a little bit upside down um, as we kind of work with this text message plugin. So we're actually gonna drag the text message that we've got down below our video and then in order for this to work and the kind of modular plugin to bump the different text messages up, we're gonna to need to place our video or image behind those text messages, which we can do by coming up to our compositing blend modes. And where we have the blend mode and what would normally say normal um, up here, we're gonna change that to behind, which is just down the bottom here. And what that's gonna do is even though in our layer setup, the image or video is above our text message, it's actually gonna put it behind everything. So basically now our text message, even though it's below the main storyline, will appear visually above it, which is really handy for what we're doing here. So we're gonna move this message across the left a bit. So we have some on-screen controllers for moving our messages around so we can reposition them kind of wherever we want uh, on the screen. Uh, we're gonna leave this across to the left-hand side. And we can also rescale it. So if we hover over the edge of this outer circle here, we can change the size of our message. So we'll keep this somewhere close to the default size. And we're gonna type in some messages here. So, so we've got our message here. And 
once we've done that, we can come back to the type options. So we've got our message text and we've also got um, this kind of extra date and time. So if we uncheck that, we can kind of turn that off. So we can have some extra information that pops up above the message if we want to keep it there. In this example, we don't want to. Uh, you can see with our type here, um, we have the font size and information kind of just below it, so we can modify that. We can also change the, the font color, and if we scroll down, we can also change things like the bubble color as well. So if we want to change the bubble color, we can change this up as well. We also have things like the roundness of the bubble, so we can have a nice square bubble or a rounder edged bubble. Uh, we've got some bubble transparency, so we can make this kind of more opaque, so we show a bit of the video behind there. And then we can also adjust the width, so we can have a bubble that's tighter to the text or a bubble that's kind of stretched out a bit beyond the text as well. The same for the width and height. Uh, we don't have a profile pic set up here yet, but we'll add that in in a minute. And um, once we've got a little bit of an animation uh, happening here. So I'm going to leave the bubble transparency at opaque, so at 0% transparency. So we've got our left-hand text message uh, set up here. And I'll just drag this a little bit more to the left. And we're going to drag down our right-hand text message. And where we need to drag this is across to the middle uh, between the video or image and the text message below it. So basically the layer above is going to move the layer below um, for these different plugins. So this is how the modular plugin works. So our first text message will animate on and then our next message will bump that up a little bit more. So now we can just reposition this a little bit. So I'm going to move this one down a little bit more. So we have our next message here, and we've kind of got an orange and an orange here, so we're going to scroll right down and change the color of our bubble. So I'm going to select this, and we'll go for a little bit of a green bubble here. And once that's set up, basically uh, we can kind of keep going with this. So we can select this top message, and we'll edit our text here, and we'll type in... So we've got two text messages popping up here. And if we scroll down, we'll turn the extra date off of this one too. And I'm going to just reposition this up a little bit so they're a bit tighter together. And now we're going to post a video in here. So basically, you can see we've got our left and right messages. So basically, they have the speech bubble arrow um, off to the left or right. And so we're going to choose a right-hand uh, video, and we'll drag this down. So when we're placing uh, videos or anything like that um, in here, we're using the drop zones um, that we have. So I'm going to position this. Now, when I selected this different uh, color, the green, for this right-hand message, it doesn't really matter too much for the, the video. Um, but if I wanted to keep that green and reuse it in different messages, then I can scroll down and click here. And when we selected a color, we can drag it into these swatches here, which I already had done, but um, just in case you didn't know, we can save swatches for different uh, colors in this little um, block of colors on the right-hand side here in our colors frame. So that's by clicking on the color box rather than dropping down this color picker here. So we will come across to this drop zone here, and we're just going to make sure these are reasonably well aligned. And I'm going to make my video height a little less, so we'll make this a bit of a shorter video. And we're going to use the drop zone here to select the source clip. So in my clips here, and this, if you're working with video, um, you'll want to kind of follow through these steps whenever you're using a drop zone. So I want to find a spot um, in here where I want the video to start. So I'm basically going to select this point here just as he's about to stand up on the wave. I'm going to leave my playhead there. And then I'll come back to my photo video right here. Click on my drop zone. 
and then hover over that point there and that means I'm going to start the video at that point. So that's almost like my in point um, when I'm applying this clip to that drop zone. So now we can see if we just pause a second, let this render out. So if we play this through, we have our messages popping up. And you can see the video pops up in that window. We forgot to turn off the, the name option up here, which we'd done for the other ones but we'll do that in a sec once we've played it through one more time. So we've got the text coming up, then the video, and we need to work on our spacing a little bit. But basically you get the idea of how this is working from left to right. So I'm gonna scroll down just a little and turn off the use data. And if I now want to make the next left-hand message, I'm actually gonna come down to my timeline rather than remaking all the settings and just hold down the Alt key and just drag up to here and we will have our next message pop up. So we'll just reposition this down a little bit. So we've got about the same amount of space. And this will mean you've got color in the consistency in the left hand positioning of your text message box when you actually pop these on the screen. So, so I'm gonna type in the next line here. So one thing that we can do in Final Cut Pro is we can use emojis um, in our text here. So if I keep my cursor flashing here and I come to my edit menu, if I come down to my emojis and symbols, I've basically got my list of emojis up at the top here. So we will have a look at this one. We've got a surfer here. So we'll just position this so we can see it happening. So if I select my surfer here, I can drag it into my type box and it will appear in my text message. So we'll drag a couple in here and we'll come into animals and nature as well. And if it's a surf destination, it's probably hot too. So we'll add some sunshine there as well. And maybe just for good measure, a smiley face and, and the shaka symbol here. So you can see here, it's really easy to add those emojis um, onto our timeline here and into our messages. So we'll just let this render out. So once that's rendered again, we'll just play it back through. And obviously we can work on the timing and that kind of thing too. Now, one other thing that we haven't kind of covered here yet, if we come back up to the text message to plugin is we have so we've gone from our left to our right, to our right, and then to our left again. So we're gonna have our right-hand person typing now. So we'll drag this down. So we have this uh, typing graphic that will pop up. And again, I am going to just scroll down with this selected, and we're gonna change our bubble color to the bubble color that we picked out for this particular design so and we'll pop this up just a little bit so let's play this through so you can see we've got a nice set of different kind of typing options here and so for instance if we had our message typing here then we may not necessarily want to have the animate on uh, kind of pop up when this disappears. So if we grab our text message from the right and we'll duplicate this up to here, so I'm holding down the Alt key as I duplicate, then basically we want this to then not kind of do a weird drop down and push up again. So we just want this to kind of appear. So if we come to the middle here, we can turn off the, the build in and that will mean now when the typing finishes we just get a small jump there so we don't get that animate down and then animate back up also with this we'll just type in something new and we'll grab an emoji for this as well so i'm just going to modify the height of this one so if i come to my typing on one here. I'm just going to make a note of the Y position. So minus 0 0.4. 
we'll select this one and we'll type in a four here. And so hopefully that should drop into the same spot. So now you can see we've got that typing on and then the text pops on nicely. So we've got this kind of grand stack of layers uh, moving across here. And so once these messages have moved off screen, it's not necessary to have them visible um, because we're always pushing up from the bottom. So the bottom text is always moving those things up. So this clip here, we can shorten or we can keep them the same length depending on uh, how we visually want to work with that in our timeline. So we'll just have a look at how we add one last thing here um, to these different messages. So we're not going to add it to all of them. We'll just kind of do a quick example here. So I'm going to drag one more message up to one of these left hand messages. So I'm going to drag this clip all the way up to the top, holding down the Alt key to get a new duplicate of it. And we'll just drag this down a little bit extra this time. So we'll come across to the properties um, for this particular text message and we'll scroll down to the profile pic image. So if we check this, you can see it's going to pop up on the left hand side there. So I'm just going to move this across. So when you're adding these different elements, you need to obviously then think about that in the design and how that kind of fits in um, with where you've positioned everything on screen. And um, we're just going to add this one example. So we're not going to reposition all of our other clips. So we'll come back to our video and images here and we'll grab this picture. So we'll click on our profile pic source and it's selected that and we can click in the clip here and then apply it and you can see it pops up in there. It's not quite in the right position so we're going to come back up to our inspector and in our inspector we've got some options for the image scale and also for the image pan as well so we can actually move that image in behind there so that it fits perfectly with the little bubble that we've got there. And then we've got some other options for the shape roundness um, and that type of thing and whether we want an outline on our messages as well. Um, there's lots more options in the text message to plugin, um, but the basic controls are the same for all the different visual elements you might use. So whether you're using the messaging options at the top here or you're using Facebook Messenger here, um, the options that you have for actually working with the, the properties for those, the on-screen controllers, and then also the, the text controls and the other graphic controls, um, will all have a lot of consistency between the different styles of text message. So if you're needing to do text messages on screen in Final Cut Pro 10, then I'd really recommend the Text Message 2 plugin. It works really well. The modular functionality is super smart and works really well. If you have any questions about the Text Message 2 plugin, then please do leave them in the comments below. Um, hit that thumbs up and share the video if you think other people will find it useful. Um, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.